Last year, the world lost over $300 billion because of climate disasters. Fires, floods, and hurricanes. That's $300 billion just gone. But the real question is, how much longer until entire economies start collapsing? And what are we going to do about it? California's biggest fire of the year, scorching more than 350,000 acres. Climate change isn't just a future problem. It's already costing us hundreds of billions of dollars each year. From wildfires to floods, natural disasters are wreaking havoc on our homes, businesses and industries. The financial damage goes far beyond what we can see on the news. Take a moment to think about it. When a storm wipes out crops, it's not just the farmers who lose money. Food prices go up, supply chains break down, and industries struggle to recover. Insurance companies end up paying massive claims, and I can promise you one thing, and that's when the insurance companies take a hit, so do we, with higher premiums and rising costs across the board. But it's not just these one-time disasters that are adding up. Long-term climate change is shrinking the global economy. Some experts say it could shrink by as much as 23% by the end of the century. That's a huge hit. Agriculture, tourism, manufacturing, all suffering from rising temperatures and extreme weather. And if you think, bah, it's just a few industries, well, it isn't. Even if you don't live in a disaster zone, you're still feeling the effects. Rising costs, damage infrastructure, and job losses hit everyone. We're seeing it already in places like California, where wildfires have driven insurance prices through the roof, forcing some companies into bankruptcy. Or in Australia, where bushfires have devastated farmlands, causing massive disruptions in food production. Look, I know you're tired of hearing about the green wave, but if you really need a second reason, it's the fact that the regular Joe are the ones that are going to pay for everything. They raise our premiums, raise our taxes, raise our everything. All because the planet's going haywire. And we just sit here, watching our bank accounts dry up faster than a drought-stricken field. So yeah, this isn't just about melting ice caps, it's coming for your wallet too. Mark Zuckerberg isn't going to be the one who suffers from this, you are. And I am. It's easy to feel overwhelmed. But while climate change is causing massive economic losses, it's also creating a new kind of opportunity. One that could not only protect the planet, but also grow the economy. This is where green investments come into play. At a time where climate disasters are becoming more and more common, some forward-thinking investors are putting their money where it counts, into renewable energy, electric vehicles, and sustainable infrastructure. Now, I know what you might be thinking. Green investments? Aren't those just for saving the environment? Actually, it's a lot more than that. Green investments are about building an economy that can survive and thrive in a changing world. And right now, these investments are proving to be more than just a way to go green. They're also a smart way to make money. In the middle of all this chaos, there is a massive shift happening. Green energy is becoming cheaper and more efficient, and it's quickly outpacing fossil fuels. But it's not just about energy. Electric cars are taking over, new technologies are emerging, and entire industries are being built around sustainability. And yes, these industries are already creating jobs and boosting local economies. So while climate change is draining billions of dollars from the global economy, it's also opening the door to one of the biggest financial opportunities of our lifetimes. But the question is, can green investments really turn things around? Nearly half of humanity is living in the danger zone now. By now, you've probably heard all about climate change and the so-called solutions. Switching to renewable energy, going electric, and reducing your carbon footprint. Which, by the way, is an invention of BP. Yes, BP, the oil company. Maybe you're even a little bit skeptical. And honestly, I don't blame you. It can feel like these ideas are just words on paper, with no real impact on your everyday life. But here's the thing. Green investments are already reshaping the economy. Let's start with the basics. What are green investments? Like, really? When we talk about green investments, we're talking about money flowing into projects and companies that are designed to be environmentally sustainable. These range from renewable energy projects like solar and wind farms to electric vehicles, energy-efficient infrastructure, and even sustainable agriculture. But here's the kicker. This isn't just about being environmentally friendly. It's about making a profit while doing so. 
And I know what you're thinking. Green energy? Isn't that just for like tree huggers and people who want to feel good about themselves? Well, let me tell you something. Green investments are putting real money on the table. We're talking billions being poured into projects that are creating jobs and driving growth. And spoiler alert, it's not about hugging trees anymore. You see, the economic shift is happening already, and it's a lot bigger than people think. Let's talk about renewable energy first. 10 years ago, solar power seemed like a distant dream. It was too expensive, it was too complicated, and it was only for the super wealthy. Fast forward to today, and solar energy is now cheaper than coal in many parts of the world. In some cases, it's even cheaper than natural gas, and that is just insane. Wind energy is the same story. It's becoming one of the most affordable energy sources, and especially in places like the US, Europe, and China. Now, why should this matter to you? It's because of one simple reason. It's because when energy gets cheaper, everything gets cheaper. Manufacturing costs drop, transportation costs drop, and then even your utility bills go down. And here's the surprising part. Renewables aren't just keeping pace with fossil fuels, they're starting to outperform them. The shift to renewables is happening faster than expected. In 2020, for the first time in history, renewable energy overtook fossil fuels as the largest source of new power generation worldwide. Think about that. More money is now being spent on building solar panels and wind turbines than digging up coal or drilling for oil. But I get it. Some of you might still be thinking, okay, but can renewable energy like really replace fossil fuels? Here's the deal. While renewables aren't perfect yet, they're getting closer every single day. It's never going to be worse than it is today. Advances in battery storage technology are making it easier to store energy from solar and wind to use for when the sun isn't shining or the wind isn't blowing. As these technologies improve, the gap between renewables and fossil fuels keep closing. I mean, let's be real. 10 years ago, who thought that solar power could outshine coal? Everyone thought it was just a joke. But here we are, with solar and wind energy taking the lead, and people still want to argue that fossil fuels are the future. Listen, when even oil giants like BP and Shell start pumping money into renewable energy, you know the game is changing. Renewable energy, however, is just one part of the green investment puzzle. Let's talk about electric vehicles or EVs next. If you've been paying attention, you've probably seen more and more electric cars on the road in recent years. I'm from Norway, and we're the first country in the world that now sells more EVs than fossil fuel cars. And just a few years ago, electric cars were seen as expensive niche products that only the eco-conscious or tech enthusiasts would buy. Fast forward to today, and major car manufacturers like Ford, Volkswagen, and General Motors are all racing to electrify their fleets. And we're not talking about fancy cars for the elite, we're talking about affordable electric cars for everyday drivers. In some countries, electric vehicles are already outselling gas-powered cars, and this trend is only growing. So why exactly are electrical vehicles taking off? Well, for one, battery technology has improved leaps and bounds. Batteries are cheaper, lighter, and more efficient than ever before, which means electric cars can now go further on a single charge, and they cost less to produce. And here's where things get even more interesting. Governments around the world are pushing for this change. Countries like Norway and the Netherlands plan to ban the sale of new gasoline-powered cars within the next decade. Even China and India are setting ambitious goals to go electric. Until recently, the idea that electric vehicles would make up a significant portion of all cars on our streets was something for the future. And let's not forget about the jobs. Building electric vehicles and the infrastructure to support them, so charging stations, battery factories, and so on, is creating millions of new jobs. In fact, it's estimated that the global shift to electric vehicles could generate more than 10 million new jobs by 2030. That's right, green investments aren't just good for the environment, they're also good for the economy. Look, I remember when electric cars were the butt of every single joke. People would say, yeah, right, I'm going to drive 10 miles and then I'm going to sit at a charging station all day. But now, EVs are everywhere and they're getting better every single year. So if you're still clinging to your gas guzzler, don't be surprised when your neighbor's electric car is outperforming yours in every way. And let's be honest, mocking EVs are about as cool as smoking in 2024. It's not the 70s anymore.
Now, let's address the elephant in the room, the challenges. Yes, green investments have huge potential, but they're not without their hurdles. First off, the costs. Building solar farms, wind turbines, electric vehicles, and all the infrastructure that goes with them isn't cheap. It takes massive upfront capital to get these projects off the ground. And for some investors, that's a pretty tough pill to swallow. But here's the thing, the long-term gains far outweigh the short-term costs. Once the infrastructure is built, the ongoing costs are lower than fossil fuels. Solar and wind, for example, have minimal operating costs once they're up and running, which means they'll continue to generate profit over time. It's a classic case of invest now, save later. And as more money flows into these projects, the costs continue to drop, making green investments more and more accessible. A really good example of this is actually solar energy, because solar panels have become so cheap to produce, and in the beginning, they were really, really expensive. But as people kept investing more and more money, the cheaper it got. But another challenge is the technology gaps. So solar and wind energy are great, but they're also intermittent. The sun doesn't always shine and the wind doesn't always blow. This is where energy storage comes in. And right now we're making huge strides in battery technology, but we still need to develop better ways to store renewable energy for when we need it. Without reliable storage, the full potential of renewables can't be unlocked. But the good news is we're making progress. Breakthroughs in battery technology are happening every single year, and it's only a matter of time before these issues are solved. And here's the part that really drives it home. Big oil companies are getting in on the action. That's right, companies like BP and Shell, the same companies that have spent decades drilling for oil, are now investing billions into renewable energy and carbon capture technologies. And why would they do this, you ask? Because even they know that the future is green. And when the oil giants start betting on solar, wind, and electric vehicles, it's not just a trend, it's the new reality. We have been an international oil company for 112 years. We want to transform ourselves into an integrated energy company. Okay, I have a um, confession to make. Just have to get ready first. Just hold on for a second. I've tried not to talk about nuclear power for this entire video because it's not really considered green or it's not a green investment. But anyways, I, I need 20 seconds to say, why on God's green earth are we not pushing for more nuclear energy? I mean, it's the greenest out there. It's way more powerful than any of the other alternatives. And I've even invested a large chunk of my own money into nuclear goddamn power plants. And then... Germany comes along and get this, they, they shut down their nuclear plants and turn back to coal. Hello, have you lost your mind? I mean, oh, Jesus Christ. Okay. So where does this leave us? Green investments are already reshaping industries, creating jobs and providing cheaper and cleaner energy. But they're not just about feeling good. They're about making smart economic choices for the future. The world is changing and so should we. So, after everything we've covered, the question remains. Can green investments really save the planet and drive economic growth at the same time? The answer isn't a simple yes or no. It's somewhere in the middle. The truth is, green investments offer one of the best chances we have to fight climate change and protect our economy at the same time. We've already seen the shift towards renewables, electric vehicles, and sustainable infrastructure, and it's not slowing down. But let's be realistic there's still a long way to go. Challenges like high upfront costs and the need for better energy storage solutions are real and they won't be solved overnight. This transition won't happen instantly, but we're on the right path. And the key is to continue investing in these solutions because the benefits, both economic and environmental, are too big to ignore. And we need more energy. It's not like we're gonna start consuming less and I actually, I'm going to challenge you on this. Try and find one low energy, high GDP nation. And I can promise you this, you will not find a single one. Energy is the key to everything. Look, no one's saying this is going to fix everything tomorrow. But if you're sitting around waiting for the perfect moment to switch, newsflash, it's already here. Reinvestments are creating jobs, making energy cheaper and driving growth. So the real question isn't, can they save the planet? It's, why wouldn't we bet on them? 
At the end of the day, it's not just about going green for the planet's sake, it's about building a new kind of economy that's both sustainable and profitable. We've seen the early signs of success, from cheaper solar energy to electric vehicles becoming mainstream. The potential is massive and it's already happening. But the key takeaway is this. The future is in our hands. Governments, businesses and individuals all have a role to play in making this transition a reality. Green investments are just the beginning. The sooner we embrace them, the better off we'll be, both economically and environmentally. And if you've watched all the way to here, I would strongly encourage you to think of green as cool. Trust me, there are going to be people living on this earth long after we've left. So let's try to make an impact that lasts. Much like the Medici family did when they invented finance. Yes, really. Have a look at this video. It combines the best from the Italian Renaissance with the best of modern Wall Street. Almost. Kind of.